Shalom, you're watching Arut Sheva TV. I'm Eric Kempinski, and this is our daily edition. Knesset member Yitzchak Aronovich, the internal security minister, uh, together with the chief of the Jerusalem police, visited the French Hill neighborhood in Jerusalem today and witnessed the damage at the gas station, which was attacked by Arab riders. We see this as a severe incident and we will respond appropriately. We will arrest the perpetrators of this vandalism, the theft and the rioting. No doubt that there is an increase in the amount of incidents and their severity, and we cannot ignore this. There are attacks on the light rail. I took a ride today. I spoke with the management. I promised them and the residents of Jerusalem that we must bring back security. We will be doing so during the next few days. It's important to remember that in addition to Jerusalem, there's also the atmosphere, international and regional. Strategic Affairs Minister Knesset member Yuval Stanitz attended the 14th International Conference on Counterterrorism of the IDC and he spoke with us after his speech about the reports of an Egyptian initiative according to which a Palestinian state would be established in Sinai and the Gaza Strip. I don't know if this proposal really exists, but there will be no political initiative until Abbas proves he can take control of the Palestinian Authority, demilitarize Gaza, and meet his previous commitments. This is basic condition before we can think of some kind of political initiative. Indeed, this kind of idea is positive, and we must examine innovative ideas. We must remember that creating a Palestinian state in Judea and Samaria without demilitarization, without our control of defensible borders in the Jordan Valley and other areas, in the current conditions, this would be suicide. No one can guarantee that what happened in Gaza with Hamas, in Syria with Jabal al Nusra, in Iraq with ISIS, in Libya with the militias, and in Sinai with Ansar with Matlis, cannot happen also in Nablus, Tulkarim, Kalkilia, and Ramallah. After all, this is what's happening in the entire Middle East, including all the veteran countries. At the conference, we also met Professor Erwin Cutler. Professor Cutler was uh, the uh, Justice Minister, a member of Parliament, and the Attorney General in Canada. He spoke with us about Hasbara, the uh, propaganda explaining uh, the Israel's case to the world. I think Hasbara is part of a, a public diplomacy. Every government engages in it. Uh, Canada engages in public diplomacy, the U.S., uh, Europe, etc. This is part of the functioning of government. The question is not whether you engage in it, the question is how you engage in it. Now, Israel is in a much more uh, critical situation because it is in a Middle East which is unfolding not only with its un uncertainty, but with its various gradations of risk and, and threat. And you've got it at this point in terms of Israel, you've got a kind of critical mass of threat on the north and you've got a critical mass of threat in the south and you've got a critical mass of threat in the east. And the, all the critical uh, threats actually do good in the issue of uh, Hasbara and presenting Israel's case. Well, the question is if uh, you have a situation where you have a government that speaks with a uh, coherent and cohesive voice. Uh, regrettably the dynamics of a coalition governments in Israel are such that they speak sometimes uh, not only in different voices but competing voices and it's very difficult to get the message across when a government is not speaking with a coherent and cohesive voice when the situation is number one as serious as it is and number two where it requires uh, clarity and leadership uh, in matters of public uh, diplomacy. So I would hope that at least some of the foundational approaches uh, to that message uh, will be shared. In other words, there has to be at least a shared appreciation of the critical mass of threat. There also has to be a, a shared appreciation of what, uh, within that critical mass of threat, of what some of the uh, opportunities uh, that may present themselves. For example, and I think on this there is agreement within the government, and that is the importance of demilitarization, not only of Gaza, but of demilitarization of uh, the West Bank with regard to any uh, prospective framework uh, for peace. 
the second thing is the disarming of, of Hamas, uh, Islamic Jihad, of the terrorist organizations. That could no longer continue to pose a, a, a threat because let us realize that Hamas's aspirations are really part of a larger uh, branch of uh, radical Islam. Uh, when the world sees Israel end the war without any demilitarization? Well, I think that the world has to realize that this, uh, Israel's request for demilitarization is the same as uh, the world's re approach, which is even more than that, with regard to ISIS. I mean, the world feels not only that ISIS must be demilitarized, but must be at least the European coalition and international coalition that Obama wants to lead to use their words, ISIS must be destroyed. I'm not saying that Hamas should be destroyed, I'm saying that at the very least it should be disarmed, the territory should be demilitarized, and a approach to peace has to be, yes, I've always been for a two states for two people's solution, but I've always said a democratic, rights-protecting, rule of law Palestinian state alongside a democratic and securism. The formulation of two states for two peoples, which does not make any representations regarding the importance of the state neighboring Israel being democratic, rights-protecting, rule of law, demilitarized, free of any uh, threat, etc. That's the kind of language that I think, hopefully, we can get a coalition in Israel to share. One of the big and central synagogues in Tel Aviv suffered a severe fire last week. The renovations are underway, but the members of the congregation will not forget the sight of burnt Jewish parchments and burnt libraries as a result of this fire. Last Monday at around 11 o'clock, I got a call from the alarm company that there was something wrong. I sent someone and he reported that there was a fire. I came a bit later and I saw the firefighters outside. They were trying to fight the fire from above, then understood that the main point was down here. The heart is broken. This place is very important to Tel Aviv, very central. Closing this place, even just for renovations, is heart-wrecking. I was shocked when I witnessed the damage. All the holy books, all the rooms, it was all damaged. There were ancient books here. We want the synagogue to be ready by Rosh Hashanah. This is very important, not only for us, but for Tel Aviv and the community. Thank you for joining us for today's Daily Edition. Tomorrow we will be broadcasting live in Hebrew and in English from the Beit UD party uh, conference in Tel Aviv, so we will not have the daily edition. We'll be back again later. Until then, from all of us here at Arutz Shev Israel National News, Shalom.